into trading are 110 points higher on the Nifty, so holding very strong. The mid-cap index is up almost one full percent now, so 330 points higher on the mid-cap index, looking extremely solid. Let's get a conversation going on the markets as well. Manish Kumar joins us, CIO of ICI's here, Prudential Life Insurance, to take some questions. Uh, Mr. Kumar, thanks a lot for joining us. This is Pavitra. You know, right now, today, of course, we have a very good day. We are holding above the 18,700 mark, but this is an area where we have seen a little bit of congestion and there has been, you know, um, just some resistance at this levels and we've not held above it for a very long time. Do you think that you see a break out of this level um, sometime soon? Well, good morning and thank you for giving this opportunity. Uh, let me try and give you some more holistic perspective on how we are looking at the markets, given that we are long-term investors. Yes, you are absolutely right that uh, this is the place where market has traditionally seen some resistance. And actually, it has not crossed this level for the last 18 months or so. But at the same time, our, our companies have been delivering earnings growth. And as such, um, uh, if you look at the last 18 months earnings growth, it has been in healthy double digits. What this means is the markets which were somewhat more expensive 18 months back at about 22 times one year forward, they have become more reasonable this time at about 19 times one year forward and 17 times FY25 projected earnings. So our belief is that because of the fact that the markets have been range bound for almost 18 months, despite a healthy earnings growth being shown by our companies, in the uh, whether it happens in this leg of the rally or it happens after a few months, but in the medium term, the direction is going to be northwards. Okay, uh, so uh, Manish, hi, uh, good to have you on the show, Surabhi here. Uh, with that prognosis, I mean, how are you approaching things? Because we are, even at the index level, we are practically at all-time highs. And then you have individual mid-caps, which have, uh, you know, uh, seen immense momentum in the last two weeks. So, uh, where are you finding the valuation comfort and what, what are the themes that you think are still good to run? Well, let me try and give some perspective here before we come to sectors or stocks. So, um, uh, one is that Indian growth is looking still quite healthy, even while there are pockets of moderation. Second, uh, inflation has peaked and so has the interest rates, which is actually good for uh, uh, the companies that have borrowings on their balance sheet. Third, global growth is still not looking good, and we are expecting some of the Western economies to go into recession sometime in the second half of this year. Fourth, China turnaround hasn't been strong enough and uh, uh, we are seeing foreign investors actually selling out of China and coming into India. Not just that, what it means is commodities are going to be under control and which is what is also reflecting in the metal prices and also in the, uh, the crude oil prices. With this construct, what we are and also we are in a pre-election year. So, which, so with all these observations, what we are saying is that one is you would like to play across both investment as well as consumption themes. Investment themes would include some of the private sector banks, cement, some of the EPC companies and some of the companies in the capital goods space, although they have become quite expensive now. Whereas on the consumption side, and as I mentioned that there are pockets of slowdown, so there our preference will be on for those companies where Commodities are uh, a, a, a major input. Uh, a major input. So, for example, staples. They are going to be a beneficiary of, of falling crude prices. Likewise, in the consumer discretionary space, uh, 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 between consumer durables and autos, we'll have a preference for autos because their metals again is an important input. Likewise, airlines, which are again a beneficiary of uh, uh, falling oil prices. And also the fact that the competitive dynamics has been improving for some of the better players in the sector. So this is how we are trying to position the portfolio. So we aren't really looking at the index. What we are saying is, look where the moats are actually flowing in favor and accordingly position the portfolio. Hmm. Okay, got that. Let me ask you about some pockets of the market which have really, you know, been doing well, such as defense, such as the railway space. Uh, do you find value in these? Because these are already spaces which have, you know, run up a lot, but also these are spaces which typically move in in longer cycles. 
So you are right, and that's what I also said in my opening remark that capital goods and the EPC space is a space that we like. But at the same time, the valuations have become extremely rich for some of the companies. And therefore, the way we are playing it is that while we would like to be overweight, we are overweight in some of the EPC companies, which are large caps in the space. They are leaders in their respective domain. And at the same time, we are playing small in some of the other companies, which are which are growing faster, but they have also become more expensive. Hmm, got that. Manish, where do you stand on this whole new age side of the market? Uh, I mean, a lot has changed, right? A lot of companies are now showing more discipline with respect to, you know, getting to profitability targets and timelines. The stocks have started running up as well. I mean, look at uh, what a Paytm has done or a delivery. Uh, we've, we've seen a fair amount of price action. Uh, what do you think about the space? So this is one area where I think we have done quite well as a house. So when the IPOs were coming, we managed to either avoid some of them or, or go uh, light on some of them. And so we basically took a very small exposure in some of those companies. That was about two years back. About a year back, when the valuations became more reasonable, we started looking at them. And actually, three or four big names which have been uh, the darlings of the stocks, of, of the markets, two years back, they were available at about uh, anywhere between 40 to 70% discount. And so we have invested in some of those names. We are yet not very big in these names. We are still uh, watching the space closely. But uh, at the margin, are we more positive today than what we were, say, two years back? That answer is yes. Okay, but I know you can't talk stocks, but give us some idea. I mean, I, uh, when you say new age, is it more on the consumer aggregator space, whether it's beauty products or consumer products, or is it more on the fintech side, uh, where we have a couple of names? We have, uh, you know, on the insurance side, we have obviously, uh, you know, on the payment side. So we are there more on the on the on the consumer facing names, but we are also there in some of the other names which you mentioned. Okay, got that. We're going to leave it there today. But thank you very much for joining us and taking us through your call in the market as well as some of these individual sectors that you are looking at right now. With that, we are going to get into a show.